But when you want to study the subject of Dajjal, it isn't like studying physics. You must turn the heart to Allah. Cleanse and purify the heart. Make two rakat nafis salat, for example. Huh? And beg him with tears in your eyes. O oh Allah, kindly guide me that I may understand this subject. When you make me understand it, it will be so easy for me. But if you do not open the veils, not even with a PhD will I be able to understand the subject of Dajjal. Hmm? This is my advice to you before I leave you. When they boasted of what they did to the true Messiah, they rejected him. He can't be the Messiah because he's a bastard, when I was a Billah Min Hadha, etc. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded to this. He created Dajjal, who is a person, not a system, a person. And endowed the Jal with awesome power, awesome versatility, and a PhD in, in deception. When the Jal is released into the world, it would be after the door to mercy is closed to Banu Israel. Only then would he be released into the world. And now with the change in Qibla, Qibla, we know the door to mercy is now closed. When the Jal is released into the world, his basic function is to impersonate the Messiah. This is why he's known as al masih al-Dajjal. If he is to impersonate the Messiah and convince the Jews that he is indeed the Messiah, then he'd have to rule the world from Jerusalem with what would appear to be the end of history, eternal rule. In order for him to do that logical deduction, number one, he'd have to liberate the Holy Land of non-Jewish rule. Number two, he'd have to bring the Jews back to the Holy Land, not as tourists, but to reclaim the land as theirs. Number three, he'd have to restore a state of Israel in the Holy Land and get the Jews to believe that this is the Israel of Nabi Dawood al-Islam and Nabi Sulaiman al-Islam. Of course it would not be. But since they only see with one eye, they deceive. And number four, which has not as yet happened, which is about to happen. I suggested to you when I came last December that maybe this is going to take place within the next five to ten years, maybe even less than that. But remember, this is only guesswork on my part. I can be wrong. What I know for certain is going to be soon. <laughs> that I know. That he has to cause the state of Israel to become the ruling state in the world and that's where I want to spend some, some time tonight. So let's get quickly with the lecture. <coughs> when Dajjal is released therefore, this is what Dajjal will have to do. Eventually rule the world from Jerusalem with what would appear to be eternal rule. And Banu Israel then would, would be taken on a ride. And it will be the last ride on which they'll ever go. Yeah. This will be the most fantastic act of deception ever recorded in history. This one. So we are living in fascinating times. If we will only take a little time to study the book of Allah and to study the word of the Prophet with two eyes, not with one. When Dajjal is released, said the Prophet ﷺ, he would live on earth for 40 days, one day like a year, one day like a month, one day like a week, and the rest of his days like your days, Sahih Muslim. This hadith is so important that we got an artist in Malaysia to take this hadith and design the cover of this book with three circles there. You can see the three circles. One day like a year, one day like a month, one day like a week. And the rest of his days will be like your days. When his day is like our day, he's living in our dimension of time. Anybody differs with him? When he's living in our dimension of time, we'll be able to see him. The Prophet ﷺ described him. He'll be a Jew, be a young man, powerfully built, 
currently here. Of course, we understand the two eyes. The left eye symbolizes external vision. The blind, right eye, which is blind, symbolizes internal blindness. But if you defer with me, that's your privilege. That's your privilege. When Dajjal is released and his day is like our day, where would he be on earth? Of course, he has to be in Jerusalem, ruling the world from Jerusalem. And the Jews are now absolutely convinced this is the Messiah. This is the man. That one on the cross was false. This is the man. Why? Because the Jews have been ruling the world. Because the golden age has come back. And therefore this must be the true Messiah. Hmm? But when he comes into our day, he's going to only live for about 37 days. Hmm? Or maybe less than that, depending upon a day like a year, a day like a month, a day like a week. The question is, where would he be when he's released on earth in a day which is like a year? Where would he be on earth when his day is like a month? And where would he be on earth when his day is like a week? We went to the hadith of Tamim Dari. Let's go back one more time, very quickly. It is there in Sahih Muslim. Tamim Dari is a Christian who takes the Shahara, became, the, became a Muslim in Medina. He came to the Prophet والسلام, and narrated something. The Prophet والسلام, asked the people to sit down in the masjid. He said, Tamim Dari came to me and told me something about Dajjal which confirms what I've been saying to you. So this is true. This is true. The rest comes now from the lips of the Blessed Prophet He said that Tamim Dari and some of his companions, about 30, 40 of them, went on board a ship. And then the ship was tossed in the waves, so a storm, for a whole month, until they reached land. If you're on the western side of Arabia, because that's where Tamim Dari is, the western side of Arabia, and you get on board a ship, the ship has to be either in the Red Sea or the Mediterranean Sea. Although somebody in Cape Town told me the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> either the Red Sea or the Mediterranean Sea. We eliminate the Red Sea because it's too narrow. If a storm is blowing for a whole month, the ship would not remain for a whole month before reaching land, so we left it only in the Mediterranean Sea. After one month, they reached an island. The Hadith does not tell us how they knew it was an island. They got on shore, and there they were confronted by a very hairy beast. A very hairy beast. Don't fall asleep, huh? A very hairy beast. So much hair that you can hardly tell which side is head and which side is tail. And the beast now speaks to them. It says, I am Jassasa. Jassasa? Wala tajassasu, Surah al Hujurat, do not spy. We always tell them that. But they like the check that comes from the CIA and the FBI. They love that check. Oh, yes. But one day the earth will speak and they will be exposed. Do not spy. This is Jassasa spy. So an island of people who have a PhD in spying and espionage, hmm? intelligence work, and then Jasasa directs them to a monastery, and they go hurriedly to the monastery because they want to get away from Jasasa. When they reach there, they find this powerful man, young man, powerfully built, curly hair, but nothing about his eyes in the hadith. And he's in chains. His hands are chained to his neck. His feet are chained with the nicest way. If any robbers come to rub you and you catch hold, it's the best way to, rob, to tie them up. And now, this man starts to question them. Very interesting questions. We don't have the time to go through those questions, but we have them in this book here. And then after the questioning is over, the man says, I am Dajjal. I am Dajjal. So up to that moment, in Medina, after the Hijra, Dajjal had not as yet been released. Okay? 
He says, I am Dajjal. And when I am released, I will enter every town and every city. But he didn't mention villages. Now, So now we know from this hadith that when Dajjal is released and launches his mission to impersonate the Messiah and therefore to ultimately rule the world from Jerusalem, it is from this island that he must launch his attack. And the question that we ask is which island is it? We give an answer, but you don't have to agree with us. Yes, you don't have to agree. This is our answer. But if you differ with us, then you should point out to us which is the correct answer.